hello everybody i'm back again and it's january 5th 2023 and i'm glad to be here um so basically i just recently had a year in review our personal reflection of the events that happened in 2022 and you know in december of 2021 i asked jesus for help because there was a lot of stuff happening in my life and I knew something had to change, but I didn't know how. And now in hindsight, that was the Holy Spirit tugging on my heart to like return to the Lord. So, you know, the first part, the first three months of 2023, I was, you know, going from gig to gig because, you know, I was money hungry, basically. And, you know, we've been trained you know uh, i was indoctrinated in the hustle culture basically it's like the only way to be successful and get the american dream is if you bust your behind for the corporations and i dislike the way i dislike the way corporations operate but you know i was thinking myself to be very practical by hey it is what it is you know this is what we have to be, do to be successful so I did that. I was earning the highest I've ever earned in my life. Man, I thought I was good. And then <laughs> things just, it just, it, things weren't just working out the way I thought still. And my brain could not comprehend. I've done everything correct. Yes, I haven't been perfect, but you know, I've been doing what is the right thing to do. But you know, and then, you know, Lord Jesus was basically tugging on my heart to read the Bible more, pray more, pray about everything instead of worrying. It's just, it's just the, while working these jobs, my anxiety was very bad and I was not handling it correctly. So, you know, due to disagreements, AKA personality conflict, with the manager, I was like, go from a job. And of course, I was like, well, you know, I'll just find another job. And, you know, within a month's time, I got an interview and was hired fairly quickly on, on a job. And I was like, you know what? I don't think this job is the best job for me, but it's a starting point to get back on track. Little did I know that God had other plans for me. So I was using that month, the month of May to just chill, you know, to learn more about the Lord. Uh, learn about you know how Jesus is why did God send Jesus down to earth what is really being a Christian I basically threw everything I knew about Christianity out the window and basically let the Lord teach me and I'm one of those people um like I was basically a doubting Thomas like yeah you know it's like Jesus I know you'll help me but you know I still need a job to make money because, you know, if you don't work, you don't eat right. I still didn't know how all this was going to play out in my life. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, my job start date got delayed first, like maybe a month. And then it got delayed another month. And I was like, great. So uh, I was like, Lord, I'm going to need some funds and a way to live for these couple months because this job is playing games with my start date. So I don't know how all this is going to work out. And he kept saying, trust in me. And it was talking to me about faith and stuff like that. So I fell into a deep depression because I was like, I'm unemployed. And I was still very prideful and very selfish thinking about myself. And I was like, Lord, you know, it's embarrassing to be homeless. Like, what will people think about me? I was like, I've worked all my life to avoid being on the street and and it's looking like that you're allowing me to be homeless so i tried everything in my power use credit use all my savings to avoid becoming homeless until god kept telling me to give away my last money and i was like why am i supposed to give money away when i have nothing like how am i supposed to live when i have nothing in my bank account and little did i know at that time time that you know the lord was teaching me about walking in faith building my faith even when i don't know what's 
to happen next to trust in him because he's got it and our ways are not like his own and a natural mind cannot understand things of the spirit you know which ties into the main topic of this video you know romans 8 specifically romans 8 31 but i'll get to that so basically i became homeless went to the homeless shelter i'm not gonna lie i hated it i thought god was abandoning me i thought i was being punished and stuff like that and that was basically not the case at all so in my frustration and feeling like god's abandoned me and i thought i really messed up really bad you know while i was awaking out of a dream um you know that you know that stage where you're transitioning from sleep into being fully awake um basically i was in that stage and i basically heard a voice saying I will never leave nor forsake you. And I felt an over sense of calmness after that. I was like, okay, God hasn't abandoned me because he's speaking, you know, to me through Lord Jesus Christ, through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And basically when I fully aw awake, aw uh, when I fully was awake, I opened up my TikTok and I remember my dream that I was pointing towards my phone and I was enthusiastically telling somebody, a friend in my dream, that's it, that's it, that's it. And um, so I basically opened my phone and the first, vo the uh, first uh, video on TikTok that popped up mentioned Hebrews 13.5 and the English Standard Version. Um, basically, I looked through all the versions to see what matched up to that but he can speak through any version it doesn't really matter for uh for him because he's all that he's that good and powerful so i basically spent my time in a homeless shelter this is what i found out and it's really sad because it explained my entire christian experience growing up and why that what was taught in the chart church did not align with what was happening in real life at that time <laughs> And um, that was part of the reason why I left the faith. And by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, he brought me back through these trials to get me to stop being stubborn and prideful to like really see through the indoctrination that the world has bestowed on us. So, so basically, there is this charity organization that is also a homeless, homeless shelter. They're a nonprofit organization christian organization that's supposed to help resolve the homeless problem but um to be truthful this is not a cynical take i you know i experienced it firsthand that these charity organizations use the name of jesus christ and they actually prevent people from getting out of the homeless shelter by not helping them because the more beds heads and beds that they have the more money they continue to get the more donations they continue to get and they market you know using the name of jesus to get those donations from good-hearted people <laughs> well anyways that place was a dwelling place of demons like god was teaching me about teaching me about spiritual warfare before um i ran out of money and had to go to the shelter to wait for my delayed job to start the staff was whew, the staff was e evil the staff you know I, I know they had their own personal issues but these were like really nominal christians um there was nothing there was maybe one staff member that was actually operating through the will of the lord but then again you know she had a total company company line or the charity line per se um what i experienced there was pretty sad and it really really humbled me because you know you'll meet people who are just getting off drugs you know that have had issues with drug alcoholism mental illness there's a lot of mental illness going on in those types of places um there's people basically lost their home due to 
you know, best, the best, uh, the domestic violence, just falling on hard times. There's people whose families can't take care of them. They're elderly and they're basically using that place as a retirement home. And, you know, there's just people who are just, I don't think they can live with anybody, to be honest. But, um, yeah, you know, I've met people from all walks of life and, you know, despite being homeless, you know, I felt like I was protected by the Lord. And, you know, I met a bunch of people. They taught me a lot of things. And it was like a, uh, it was like a, um, a call to level up in my spiritual life. I need to start thinking about others more. Everything is not about our, where, where's my next meal coming from? You know, where's my next buck coming from, you know? It was basically transitioning myself from living fully in the flesh to walking more in the spirit. I'm still not perfectly there, but day by day, the Lord is teaching me to live less in the flesh and to walk more in the spirit. So basically, um, started the job after those couple months of being in the shelter and spiritual warfare started all over again. And I've never had this level of spiritual warfare until I asked Jesus to come into my life. And it's the devil trying to persuade you is like, you know what, you know, you need to stay in the world where he owns everything and he basically controls everything through evil and whatever nasty plan he has going on. And it's all to turn us away from the Lord and what he has for us. <laughs> So basically, I'm just going to read a few passages from Romans 8. Um, the whole premise of the chapter is walking in the spirit, life in the spirit. And it talks about being heirs with Christ, the future glory that's to come with that, and God's everlasting love. And I just want to read, you know, verse 28 right now. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. That summer spent living the shelter was proof of that. You know, I love God, you know, through loving his son, Jesus Christ, even though I was not, even though I was still ignorant about things of the spirit, God, through Jesus Christ and through his Holy Spirit was helping me to transition from thinking and living in the flesh to trusting and relying on Lord Jesus to take care of me and to guide me through those trials. And basically, in verse 29, he says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Verse 30, and those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. You know, that's when you think and say, hmm, if Jesus is reaching out to me, if he sent his Holy Spirit to basically say, wake up. You know, this isn't the way to live. I'm going to show you the way of the spirit, how to live in the spirit. And, you know, I've been called. And and it's nice to know that whom he predestined, he also called. So that's pretty nice to read. And all, he also showed me this. Uh, this is God's everlasting love. Now, when I'm like getting frustrated whenever I try to preach and like, unbelievers and nominal christians start saying you're wrong you know and they try to bring up your past and try to use that to unqualify you and had god through lord jesus christ told me if god had not told me that i qualified the unqualified i'll probably really believe him and then turn away from what he's been leading me to do so basically, he's basically gave me this verse right here as a reminder. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
And that is motivation for me to keep doing the things that I'm d supposed to do. And any Christian that's out there trying to preach the true gospel instead of the watered down fleshly type Christianity that the devil has set up in our world. And it's the reason that we have an apostate church. Let Romans 831 be the verse to encourage you on your journey because that's what Jesus has been giving me. And, you know, I go back to that verse as a reminder. And just to give you a general overview, I suggest you read all of Romans 8 for yourself. And it tells you um, who shall bring any charge against God's elect. It is God who justifies. So basically, this verse is telling me, is like, don't listen to what people say. At the end of the day, it's God's word. And guess who control, controls the universe? The world. It's Lord God and Lord Jesus Christ. So basically, I just want to let everybody know that we are in the end times. And the birth pains is getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger leading up to the time of the Great Tribulation. And I believe that the Holy Spirit gave me this verse and keeps repeating Romans 8 to me because, you know, we're going to need this scripture and we need to write it on our hearts because it tells us who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. For, uh, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and then you can finish out the chapter but it says nothing on this earth will be able to separate us from the love of god and christ jesus our lord so i do want to transition into what is coming and the lord has warned me by the grace of lord jesus christ of the upcoming tribulation Folks, I just want to be very bluntly honest. Nowhere has Jesus preached in the Bible. Nowhere has Paul preached in the Bible that we are going to be beamed up in the sky by Jesus to where that we avoid the tribulation and times to come. I'm I'm grateful and lucky that, you know, that Lord Jesus has put me through many tribulations to grow my faith because had I not been through these tribulations, I would be totally distressed and, you know, my faith would be shattered and I'll be one of those people mentioned in Revelation that would be falling away once the Antichrist comes and starts wrecking havoc and oppressing people and mass murdering Christians. And, you know, at that point, your faith has to be strong enough that you're willing to die for Christ. And, you know, this is what Lord Jesus is telling me, you know, basically we're going to be killed all the day long and we will be regarded as sheep to be slaughtered, but we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. That is Lord God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So as a warning, you know, the, these types of verses are, you know, is a, is a, um, let's see, let these verses serve as encouragement of what's to come. And, you know, we need to look at trials and tribulations from a different lens. I started out as trials and tribulation as God hates me. You know, God is punishing me to basically God never promised us Christians that we will avoid trials and tribulations and persecution and bad things like famine and pestilence. There are various incidences in the Bible where, you know, people wanted to be removed from the earth to avoid danger, but Noah 
was bought was brought through the flood he was not taken off the earth elijah when he was being chased around and you know by jezebel's people to be killed you know the lord led him to the wilderness so he could be fed by ravens and lord jesus christ asked god to take away the cup that he was about to bear when he was being uh, when he when he was about to be crucified on the cross so if god allowed his only begotten son to be crucified on the cross what does that tell you god's not going to abandon us but he's going to be there with us, even though it seems like he's abandoned us. And it's up to us to seek him in all circumstances. And had Lord Jesus not brought me through these trials that I experienced in this past year and will experience to come on a worse scale, you know, I'll be totally lost. And every day that I wake up, I thank the Lord for delivering me from the world, the deception that is in the world to the truth and i'm not perfect i'm basically teaching as i'm going teaching as i grow but hopefully my experiences will be an encouragement to people who are going through tribulations such as job job loss sickness loss of health etc and you know um we are in times leading up to the tribulation and i am going to post a link to a website um that the holy spirit has led me to and you know the lord has given me dreams as confirmation that what celestial is saying is his truth and i suggest every christian to pay close attention first to what the Bible says and then align the Bible with the prophecies that the Lord has given his end times chosen prophet. And there'll be many others such as teachers, deliverance, pastors, people that are young, you know, and people that are kind of like sick of the system and want to know the and want to know the truth and the preached the truth of the Lord. We are living in perilous times and it's time for everybody to wake up and to seek a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. And you know, the Lord is teaching me to rely on to rely less on traditions of man and more on the Bible and you know, confirm, confirm with him some of these prophecies that are popping up because there are wolves in sheep's clothing and there are a lot of false prophets that Jesus prophesied that will pop up today. Unfortunately, some people think they're working for the Lord. And, you know, even, you know, if we're not operating or being very close to the Lord, we can be easily deceived. But if you're with the Lord and if you're his elect, you won't be deceived. The Lord will always reveal the truth. Um, so basically, I'm going to post a link to the Master's Voice website, which is a whole list of prophecies. And it's a series of warnings, and I suggest everyone study the Bible and be sober with those prophecies. But until next time, Jesus loves you. Jesus is coming back. And seek Jesus while he can be found on this earth. Bye, everyone.